This is uh, Dean Takahashi from Gamesbeat, and I'm here with uh, Luol from uh, South Sudan. And uh, that's uh, one of the, I guess, the newest country in the world. Uh, and he had a very compelling uh, story to tell uh, on the number one reason to be panel here at the GDC 2019. And uh, it, was, it was so striking, I thought uh, it would be good to hear it on video from him directly. Uh, so uh, tell, tell us more about yourself. Like. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Actually, mm -hmm. thanks for giving me the opportunity to, mm -hmm. you know, to share my story on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Juan Mayen, and I'm, I'm from South Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part of me is I was recognized as the Global Gaming Citizen mm -hmm. uh, by the Game Award uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a program uh, that was sponsored uh, by Facebook Gaming. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I talk about, about my story, it, uh, it's always like it depends on what part of my story because I really like love where I come from, which is like South Sudan, and the reason why I started making game, and that's why I was in a panel yesterday to talk about uh, my number one reason and the, and some of the things that inspired me uh, to start making a uh, video game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm from a country which is actually, as you mentioned, like it's the newest uh, country in the world. We got our independence in 2007 uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was like a country that is actually like ripped by civil war, like mm -hmm. a, a war that is started like long time ago, since 1983, mm -hmm. uh, until today, like it's still like it is still uh, affecting a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, in different ways. Uh, a, a lot of families were affected. Even my family was affected. Um, mm -hmm. I remember like uh, my my parents had to leave South Sudan, like from South Sudan to Northern Uganda in a refugee camp, like footing, like walking during the war, mm -hmm. during like you know yeah. there was no food, there was no water, there was nothing like on the way, like. You know, and they were like, you know, uh, attack on the way and they survive and they, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff like they find on the way uh, because they wanted to face, you know, they, they want to find a place of refuge whereby they can be able to raise up their children, whereby they can be able to, uh, you know, to live a life that, uh, a life of second chance because uh, they already had lost hope in South Sudan because everything they had in South Sudan was destroyed, you know, mm -hmm. some of our family members did not survive the war, mm -hmm. which was really so bad for them. Mm -hmm. So when uh, my parents were almost arriving to northern Uganda, mm -hmm. I was born on the way mm -hmm. as my, my mother was actually playing in the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father wasn't there because he could not you know, walk together with, with a woman because if you're a man mm -hmm. and during the war and you flee away, you have to move alone so that the, the child, the children and the can survive. Sometimes when they find uh, when they find a woman, they can uh, they cannot kill them. Mm -hmm. But if they find a man and a woman together, they will just uh, kill them. And and uh, my mother had to go through all those stuff, like working alone, leaving my father alone, mm -hmm. uh, and my father had to like struggle to get out of, of the war. Mm -hmm. So settling up in uh, in a refugee camp, mm -hmm. it was, was and, uh, in Uganda. In Uganda, yeah, in Uganda, it mm -hmm. became. A different world to us because mm -hmm. it, it became like a country that we have never been to. The culture was so different. Not even that there was no food to eat. There was nothing. There was like, you know, like as, as children, like you just wake up in the morning and you want to eat food, you want to drink water, but the water is not clean, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's outbreak of cholera every day. Like, you know, you see children dying because mm -hmm. of, of things that happen, and the whole idea is because. Of the war that affected South Sudan, yes. almost 2.5 million people are displaced from South Sudan. 1.2 million people are internally displaced. So these are people within South Sudan, but are displaced, like right, right, right in South Sudan, but they have no place to. So that gave me like to think about myself, like what can I be able to do to help my country because it's a country that has a potential. It's a country. It's it's a rich country. We have oil. We have. There's so much in in the country we can we, we can achieve when we have a, when we have peace, mm -hmm. and and the whole idea is that almost 73 percent of the population is under the age of 30. These are young people. Mm -hmm. These are people that, and the problem is most of them were born in war. They were like you know, 
the, 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 the grew up in war, so the mindset is all about war, the attitude, all these children is all about war. So I felt like, you know, what can we do? Like, what can I do to be able to help them? You know, how, what can I do to be able to prepare them for a peaceful future? And to me, I was like, you know, we, we need something. We need, we, you know, peace building and conflict resolution is not something that just come. It's something that is built over time. It's something that, you know, it, it's about your mind, it's about you, you know, the way you think about your neighbors, the way you think about yourself, the way you think about your family. And for us to help these people, it, it, it's so hard. It, it's more than the government just signing a ceasefire. It, it's, it's not just about the paper, it's about the mindset, it's about letting these people understand what uh, what they want to do. So growing up in a refugee camp, I actually never thought that video game are created by people. Like I thought like they just fall from heaven and because <laughs> like I had no idea of what video games are. Uh -huh. So what gave me the ex inspiration like, I went to my mother and I was like, you know, I need to buy a laptop. I need I need a computer and she was like, what are you gonna do with a computer? And she laughed at me and I was like, you know, I just want to use it. And so, like, there's there's no power. There's no mm -hmm. there's like there's a lot of things that. Did you get the idea from somebody like to get a laptop? Like no, uh, I actually <laughs> like I yeah. uh, one day like that was around 2007. Uh -huh. So there was a, a refugees verification system, mm -hmm. a verification uh, um, program mm -hmm. whereby the refugee go to the center and they register their name. So we went as a family, and I see like these people were using computers <laughs> for the first time like, yeah. in 2007. I was like, I was like, Mom, what is that? And she was like, That's a computer. Mm -hmm. oh, how did you know it actually? And from there, like <laughs> I started like developing that idea that like one day I want to use that. Uh -huh. So actually, when I was asking my mother, mm -hmm. I was not asking because <laughs> I know what I was going to do with it. Mm -hmm. I just like want mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I, like, I just got that, and mm -hmm. yeah, my mom has been so supportive. She. She spent almost three years looking for three hundred dollars to, mm -hmm. to get for me a laptop. Uh -huh. uh, then from there she came and said, "Hey, this three hundred dollars." And that day mm -hmm. I cried because, like, I I thought I was uh, I thought I was like I thought I had given my mother mm -hmm. something to sacrifice for, and I'm not going to utilize it. Mm -hmm. So like that day was like something positive or was also something negative. Mm -hmm. If she has worked hard for like three years to get for me love and I don't do anything with it, mm -hmm. it means like, you know, yeah, so whatever she has worked for was just a loss. Uh -huh. So like that day like was a so it, it was a deep time for me. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh but I, I was like, yeah, why not? Like, let's let me just see how this ends. Uh -huh. She did not, she did not buy the computer in order to get something out of it. Uh -huh. She wanted to make make me happy, and uh -huh. I took that. And from there, like, I went to an internet cafe, and my friend installed for me uh, the video game, and I started playing the video game. I was like, wow, like that was like uh, GTA Vice City, actually, uh, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Or like playing, yeah, uh, it's like playing, <laughs> like you know, ordering tongues and all uh, those stuff, and uh, it was powerful. It was amazing. Like, uh, it was, it was great. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it, I was like, wow, video games are so amazing. They're so like mm -hmm. the, the young people love them. Even if I can love it, mm -hmm. like how about making something like Grand Theft Auto, which is like a. a a peace building game that can help mm -hmm. people. You know what? One thing I love about but how, it. How did you get from playing a very violent uh, Grand Theft Auto game to, <laughs> yeah. to maybe thinking about a, a peace game? <laughs> yeah, because like that's that's actually what inspired me. Because mm -hmm. if that actually gave me the idea of like, wow, mm -hmm. if we can make something like this, which is a peace game, like mm -hmm. with, with the young people can be able to play. One thing I love about uh, video game is one. One thing is that when you play. If when you play your characters mm -hmm. and your character dies, mm -hmm. you don't say my character dies. You say I died. Mm -hmm. I died like in the <laughs> game, like they killed me. Like you, yeah. why do you kill me? Like yeah. you see, like that's a perception, like like stimulation or all those stuff. Mm -hmm. So how about like making sure like people took that in a peaceful world? But like, hey, why why did you kill my character? Like like you have to say them. And mm -hmm. then that like gave me like a really great idea mm -hmm. to. Uh, to make sure like I, I do something out of it and yeah I mean I had to work hard walk like three like sometimes like walking three hours per day to charge my laptop mm -hmm. get some tutorials without internet mm -hmm. and then like I start learning 
making video game. And then from there, I got like the inspiration to uh, to make my first mobile game. <laughs> Now, I guess, like most developers, have not thought about doing peace games. Like they're they're very rare, and you know it's so much easier to do violent yeah, games. Yeah. Do you think because you grew up where you grew up that 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 thought occurred to you? That, that I mean, that's I love that question a lot. I it, yeah, it most developers because right now when you look, and that's why I was talking yesterday. Is it time to make peace game? Like, is it time for us to, as developers, to start making game that are that can be able to help people in terms of understanding conflict resolution? But the reason is not the problem is not the developers. The problem is the industry, in a way that when we make serious game, it is so hard for developers to get actually funding for them, right? So then why would you make like you know something that you spend almost twenty? I mean like hours per day without you know getting something out of it so the problem with game with serious game there's no much interest from the people yeah. it's not because there's no skill or anything it's just because there's no interest of uh, investors or anybody or independent game designers to, to invest their time on that yeah. uh, another biggest part is like wow who are your audience who is going to play this game and, and all that stuff but um, and that's that's uh, that's part of my life right now. So you had right? to start thinking about that too. Yeah, yeah. I have to think yeah. about it. I have to, and that's why, like, when I say, like, is it time to make peace game? Yeah, it, it is because the world right now is looking for innovative ways of having a sustainable peace mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, when I talk about conflict, conflict is not about South Sudan. It's not about Syria, it's not at all, it's about Yemen and all those stuff. Conflict is started at home, mm -hmm. even with parents and their children. Mm -hmm. And how do we make a game for them too? That's what I love a lot about my board game. I, mm -hmm. I distribute the game and I got a lot of feedback from people, even mm -hmm. in the US and the state. They were like, wow, I've never sat down with my children and discussed about conflict. <laughs> you know, all those stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get all those feedback from people, like, play my game. Like, yeah. Um, mm. Uh, chronologically, I guess mm. you you made a computer game yeah. first, right? Oh, yeah, I made a computer game. Can, that's, can that's, you yeah. talk about how you? Um, I think you mentioned that uh, you had to distribute it by Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. so when, when I was when I made my first computer game, it was so hard. Like, uh, mm. I I designed it. I had to do it like by myself. Mm. Like the audio. Everything like I have to do it by myself because I don't have any other person to help me to to, to, help, to help. So when I did it, the biggest problem was how do I distribute the game because there was no. And, and by the way, were you still in the refugee? Camp yeah. Oh, time? like uh, like maybe like for the audience, like I've been living in a refugee camp for twenty two years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and I'm twenty four now. Uh -huh. So it's yeah. the last two years when I was not. So I did like my first game, everything. Mm -hmm. in a refugee camp. Yeah. So when I, I guess you didn't have other people to help you, right? <laughs> nobody. I, like, I was like yeah. the first like designer. I, I was just sacrificing. I had no idea of where mm -hmm. where this was started. Like the whole mm -hmm. thing was how do I help my the people that are with me? Mm -hmm. How can I be able to make this game? So I made the game and and what was it about? It was Salam. Yeah. I made the Salam and, and game. And what was the topic or what was it about? Uh, the topic about the game is yeah. a peace game. Yeah. So it's a game that helps a player to become a peacemaker. So like you have the characters, you have like a community, mm -hmm. and then what you do is like, you know, you have to protect them from being killed. Mm -hmm. When someone is hungry, you get them food, like it, it, it's like a community building mm -hmm. game. So the more you protect the people, the more you score, your, you, the, the more you earn like you know, point and all those like, and then the game congratulates you of becoming a peacemaker and go to another level. So mm -hmm. it's about protecting. Uh, your, your it's about as opposite of Grand Theft Auto exactly, as you can yeah, get. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm so excited right now. Like about one thing is, um, mm -hmm. I'm working on the new version of the same game. Mm -hmm. With the same character, like it's gonna be amazing. Like it's gonna be like playing GTA Vice City, actually, like the graphics and everything. Uh -huh. So I'm really collaborating with some really good artists, yeah. and I I'm happy to see that coming together. Mm -hmm. Now you started working on that board game though because yeah. you wanted to have uh, people you knew yeah, in, yeah. in the camp uh, yeah. be able to play it. Right? Yeah, like my, the, the biggest challenge, as, as I mentioned before, we have about 2.5 million refugees. Mm -hmm. uh, across like neighboring countries and they have no access to 
uh, the digital game. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is the best way to help them? You know, it's by producing like a board game, a card game, which is actually similar mm -hmm. to to slam game, mm -hmm. to help them actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <sure>. So <laughs> when I went, when I made my first game, it was interesting and mm -hmm. so the game is called Wider. So this is my card game. So, so wider. It's an um, it's an Arabic word that means unity. So the game has about five characters. Each player has five characters uh, for you to protect from opening. We have conflict resolution. We have deck of card, which is for uh, for 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 action card. So the, the whole game is when you when you play Uno, it's almost like playing Uno, but it has like different ways. So it goes around. So when I whenever I play war, that means that I'm waging a war through your characters. Mm -hmm. And if you don't neutralize the war, then your character is going to die. So if your character dies, you cannot win the game until you bring the character back to life. So the, the way you bring the character back to life mm -hmm. is by earning more points. Mm -hmm. The more points are, uh, whenever I play like conflict resolution, and then I pick up a deck of cards, mm -hmm. one card, which has a score, mm -hmm. and the question inside there I have to answer as a player. Mm -hmm. The question might be like, when was the last time you disagreed with a friend I knew? Mm -hmm. And then you have to express like, oh, during this time I disagree with my friend, and mm -hmm. this is how I uh, make my opposition. Mm -hmm. So based on my opinion, my op opinion, mm -hmm. I can give you ten out of ten scores. I can give you zero out of ten. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's more of like, like bringing people together, discussing conflict. And, uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Okay. So how, what uh, is this uh, finished now? Or? Yeah, it's finished. Okay. It's finished right now. Like. Uh, uh -huh. wow. Yeah. Did you find like a board game publisher? For yeah, 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 yeah. To, to okay. work on that. Uh, so and your, your company is called Genoop Games. Genoop Games. So yeah. Genoop Maine is a South Sudanese name that means uh, mm -hmm. people of the South. Mm -hmm. So like Genoop Maine, like yeah. South, South Sudanese. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And where are you able to get this out? Is uh, on my website, uh, genoopgame.com. Yeah. Okay. So that's where people you can request and I send you a copy. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. is, is Salam uh, widely available now as well? Uh, yeah, not yet. Uh, not yet. Okay. Yeah, we actually. Pub I'm going to work out. I I'm mm -hmm. going to. I'm working with Facebook Gaming mm -hmm. to publish it on Instant Game. Oh, that's a pretty yeah. big platform. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so, I mean, like, um, yeah. I, uh, I have a very, I have a good partnership right now with Facebook, so mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see that. And uh, uh, it's a mobile game. Right? It's a mobile. Yeah, I think you yeah. said it was a 10, 10 megabyte. Yeah, yeah. When I first did it, like, it was a ten megabyte. Uh, uh, yeah, make, okay. yeah. Then in order to send it to people, mm -hmm. you know, to you know. To, uh, mm -hmm. uh, using Bluetooth, mm -hmm. using uh, file sharing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think somebody from what Amaze or something. Yeah, like so like this is the, like yeah, yeah. So what happened is, um, so when I started sharing the game mm -hmm. uh, using um, uh, using the Bluetooth in the cam, so mm -hmm. I was like, how can I put it on the internet? Actually, I didn't know about mm -hmm. uh, up there. I didn't know about uh, Google Play and all mm -hmm. those stuff. I didn't know about them. Mm -hmm. So like, what was the best way to to share the game, mm -hmm. I was on Facebook, so I upload the APK on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was posting, you know, like when you're posting a picture, uh -huh. I, I upload the APK so that someone can just click on it and download it. Uh -huh. yeah. And then I was like, hey, like this is the game I'm working on, so you can try it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people start download. I didn't know actually because like when mm -hmm. they download it, I have no data. Yeah, and this person is down because it's like downloading mm -hmm. a picture. Yeah, and then someone, um, the director of Maze Thorsten. Uh, download the game mm -hmm. and play the game. He was from Germany, mm -hmm. and then he texts me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Well, that, what? 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 What's this? Like, oh, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Uh, then uh, he was like, oh, I'm, I'm organizing a maze Johannesburg in South Africa. I would love you to come. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Like, what? what, what I, I, don't, I have no idea yeah. whether I would ever fly away or a refugee camp one day. Yeah. So yeah, he, he worked so hard with text and uh, he got me to a maze to his back. Mm -hmm. And from there, I met a lot of mm -hmm. game designers who really encouraged me. Yeah. Uh, that's when I... By the way, how long did it take you to actually make the game? Uh, it was a year. A year. Well, yeah, okay. it was a year. Yeah. And then, so you were able to go to that? 
conference. Uh, yeah, I went to Amex yeah. and I met uh, actually met Rami. Uh -huh. I didn't know about Rami. I, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just we were in the same hotel and yeah. I came down for coffee. Like, oh, you're from South Sudan, and uh, he's the indie game ambassador. Ambassador, right? like yeah. he's amazing. Like, yeah. and I'm so happy. Like, he has played a big role in my journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, it got noticed more and more, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, eventually you made it to the Game Awards? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I made it to the Game Awards last year. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, and, that's uh, uh, an audience of what? Tens of millions of people watch yeah. that, right? Yeah, this year, yeah. like, our Game Award had about 27 million viewership. Yeah. Yeah. And I got some of my support, and there's a lot of like, things like, that are happening. Yeah, uh, Jeff Keeley is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually host. had a. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I had a, um, a panel with him yesterday, mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. Jeff Kelly, oh, it, was, it was amazing, yeah, uh -huh. uh, and I'm meeting with him uh, next week in New York, uh -huh. yeah, because uh -huh. I, I might uh, see mm -hmm. the best way of premiering my game in the Game Award next year, this oh, year, so. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, so you're working on both uh, Salam, uh, do you have a new game yeah, coming yeah, after that? Yeah, so. there's a new okay. game coming, it's called Bang. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh -huh. a in his name. So it's a VR game, uh -huh. like a virtual reality game where uh -huh. where someone it, it's about decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a game that um, you know on the idea of like the the, the 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 decision you make before picking up a gun is very vital. Mm -hmm. So it's a game that helps a player to choose whether to go for a war or to go for peace. Mm -hmm. If you go for a war, then the game take you to an environment whereby you explain what are the consequences of war, like mm -hmm. uh, like um, uh, famine, you know, destruction, mm -hmm. killing, you, you, because it shows that path. Mm -hmm. And if you choose peace, then the game will take you to an environment whereby you see like, mm -hmm. you know, what are the benefits of living in a peaceful world, so you kind of like mm -hmm. experience that in, 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 in the VR experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm really so excited that um, Oculus, Oculus mm -hmm. uh, yeah. really partnered with me and yeah. uh, the, uh, the working with me right now. To, uh, and are you, where are you uh, making the game now? Like where where are you living? I guess. Yeah, right out in Washington DC. Uh, yeah, Washington, and are you able to get together like a studio of people to, to help with it now? Yeah, right now I have like a couple of people that are like mm -hmm. happy to help me, like give a device and mm -hmm. put in some code, and I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So you, you you think you found your your calling in game development? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I feel like I really found my calling. And I, I I want to continue with this, mm -hmm. and but, uh, maybe one day my dream come true of uh, making like uh, the biggest. Uh, video game studio that make game for peace and conflict resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger than Grand Theft Auto. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, it's very inspirational. Yeah, so. thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, talking yeah. to us. Yeah, I appreciate okay. it. Yeah. Okay.